So now I've opened the clam and I just need to open the valves. So I do that by cutting the adductor muscles. So I'll start with the anterior side. Then I will do the posterior side. So need to cut these, which are the foot retractors. I'm just removing this. Um, and you can see here now the hinge ligament along with these teeth, which prevent any sideways sliding of the shell. So first we can see the anterior adductor muscle and the posterior adductor muscle which I just cut. You can also see the mantle right here which is responsible for excreting the shell and also performing gas exchange and if we peel the mantle back here you can see the pileal line, which is where the mantle attaches to the shell. So now I will remove these. And I will take off this top layer of the mantle. expose the rest of the specimen. So here we have the foot and when the circular muscles in the foot contract the foot extends and through this mechanism the clam can bury itself in the sand very quickly. So now we'll look at the circulatory system. So the clam has an open circulatory system and that means is that there's hemolymphs that are um, released from the main um, tissue and they directly bathe the other tissues. So it has a pericardial cavity. Which is in here where my probe is going through. And near the pericardial cavity, there's the heart, pericardial, it's in there, and right near it, right there is the heart. So the heart has three chambers, there's two ventricles and one atrium, and branching off of it there's the anterior aorta and the posterior aorta. The anterior aorta feeds hemolymphs to the foot and also to the uh, viscera, and the posterior aorta feeds the mantle with hemolymphs. Here on the posterior side, there's the incurrent and excurrent siphons. So. The excurrent siphon is right here where I'm sticking my probe through. And they are very close to each other. And the incurrent siphon 
is the beginning of the digestive system. So clams are filter feeders, so they get their food directly from filtering the water that's around them. So first, the water enters through the in-current siphon, and then from there it goes to the gills, which are these things right here. The gills have water tubes, um, and in the water tubes, there's openings called ostia, and that allows water to pass through the water tubes. And on the openings, there are also cilia and mucus, and those help to strain out the suspended particles. And from there, the food particles are swept to the very ventral side of the gills where there's food grooves. And then from there, the food moves to the labial palps, which are right here. These things right here. And the labial palps sort through the food and uh, remove the large particles, which are released as pseudofeces. After that has been done, the small particles enter the mouth, which are right near the labial palps here and there. And the mouth is simply just an opening to the stomach. And the stomach is located in the visceral mass, which is that big mass right there, and it's under the gills. So now I will open the visceral mass so we can get a closer look at what's inside. Using my scalpel, I will just cut right above the foot to get to the visceral mass. Okay, so in the visceral mass, there is the stomach, which is the more white part, and surrounding that are the digestive glands, along with the digestive cecum, which secrete the digestive enzymes. So those things help to digest the food, and then the food passes through the intestines, which are again the more white stuff. Um, and finally, they go to the anus, which is just ventral of the excrement siphon where the uh, waste is excreted. In the visceral mass, there's also the reproductive system. The gonads are located here, so those produce the gametes. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Thank you for watching my clamp section.